we have now looked at designing a state variable regulator which determines the closed loop transient response by feeding the plant states back to the plant input. We have also looked at the concepts of controllability and observability, and we have seen that it is only possible to place the closed loop regulator poles anywhere if the plant is controllable. In this video, we illustrate these concepts by working through an example, that of a pendulum linearized at the hanging position. For this example, the plant is a frictionless pendulum with a length of 1 meter and a mass of 1 kilogram. The plant input, U, is the torque we apply at the pivot point. The measured output, Y, is the horizontal displacement of the tip of the pendulum. We choose the pendulum angle, X1, and the angular velocity, X2, as the two states. When this nonlinear pendulum model is linearized around an angle of zero, that is, the pendulum hanging straight down, we get the state variable model shown here on the left. Our first task is to determine the controllability and observability of this linearized model. To determine controllability, we construct the controllability matrix U. Since this is a second order system, the controllability matrix has two columns. The first column is vector B, and the second column is matrix A, times vector B, which results in this matrix. We then calculate the determinant of U, which is minus 1. Since it is non-zero, it means that the plant is controllable. Because the plant is controllable, we can place the closed loop poles anywhere using state feedback. To determine observability, we construct the observability matrix V. The first row of the observability matrix is vector C and the second row is the vector C times matrix A. We then calculate the determinant of V, which is 1. Since it is non-zero, the plant is observable. We will get to the implication of observability when we look at designing an observer. Let's look at controllability and observability in the modal form. If we convert the pendulum model to the modal canonical form, we can draw the block diagram as shown here, where X bar refer to the modal states. When we look at the block diagram, we see that the plant contains a single second order mode. The dynamics of this mode is an undamped complex pole pair, which is exactly what we expect from a pendulum. The input gain of the mode is non-zero, which means that the plant is controllable. Informally, we can therefore understand controllability as the ability of the input to influence all the aspects of the plant's dynamics. The output gain of the mode is also non-zero, which means that the plant is observable. Informally, we can therefore understand observability as the fact that all aspects of the plant's dynamics are reflected in the output. Since the plant is controllable, we can go on to designing state feedback. However, let's think about what would be our options if the plant had not been controllable. To look at this, we go back to the definition of the controllability matrix. We can see that the controllability matrix is constructed from vector B and matrix A. Matrix A models the physical behavior of the plant and vector B models the way an actuator influences the plant. If we have the ability to change the actuator or the physical setup, it might be possible to make the plant controllable. Let's now move on to designing the regulator, which is the plant with just state feedback. The linearized pendulum plant is copied here, and the problem is to design state feedback such that both closed loop poles are located at minus 4. We should also plot the regulator and label the plant and state feedback components. Before designing a compensator, it is always a good idea to understand the plant dynamics. For this purpose, we calculate the open loop or plant poles. We calculate this by solving the open loop characteristic equation, which is the determinant of SI minus A equal to zero. This results in S equal to plus minus J 3.132, which means that the plant has a marginally stable pole pair with a natural frequency or distance from the origin of the S-plane of 3.132 radians per second. This means that we can expect a natural response that is a sinusoidal signal with a period of 2 seconds. 
Let's simulate the plant with a zero input and an initial angle of 45 degrees. On the left is a visualization of the pendulum. The top plot is the plant input, the middle plot is the pendulum angle, and the bottom plot is the angular velocity of the pendulum. We can see that the response is exactly what we expect, a sinusoidal signal with a period of 2 seconds. We now go on to the design of the regulator. We have to place both the closed loop poles at minus 4, which means that we have to slightly increase the natural frequency or distance from the origin from just over 3 to 4 radians per second, and we have to change the damping from completely undamped to critically damped. For this example, we follow the hand design procedure of constructing the desired closed loop characteristic equation, constructing the actual closed loop characteristic equation in terms of the unknown feedback gains, and then comparing coefficients to solve for the feedback gain values. The desired closed loop characteristic polynomial is S minus the one pole times S minus the other pole, which results in S squared plus 8S plus 16. The actual closed loop characteristic polynomial is given by the determinant of S times the identity matrix minus matrix A plus B times the state feedback gain vector, which results in S squared plus K2S plus 9.81 plus K1. We now compare the coefficients of the desired characteristic equation with that of the actual characteristic equation, and we solve for the gain values, which results in this state feedback gain vector. What this means is that with this state feedback gain vector, the actual closed loop characteristic equation will be the same as the desired characteristic equation, which means that the closed loop poles will be in the desired locations. To understand what we have, we now draw the block diagram of the regulator. The regulator contains the plant, of course, which we draw from the state variable equations of the plant as shown here. The other part of the regulator is the control law, which says that the plant input is minus the state feedback gain vector times the state vector. From our calculated state feedback gain vector, we can see that x1 should be multiplied with 6.19 and x2 should be multiplied with 8. And after adding the results together and flipping the sign, we get the plant input. Note that at this stage, we still make the unrealistic assumption that the states are known and can be used for state feedback. We will later look at designing an observer which will allow us to get rid of this assumption. Let's now look at a simulation of the linearized pendulum with state feedback. We expect a critically damped response with no overshoot and a settling time of about one second. The closed loop behavior is exactly what we expected, confirming our regulator design. Remember that when evaluating your design, you should not only look at the states and the output, but also at the plant input. If the plant input becomes too large, it will saturate in the actual plant, and the closed loop behavior of the practical control system might differ significantly from what you expect. We use the linearized pendulum to design the regulator, which is an approximation of the nonlinear pendulum model. To check whether the state feedback works with the nonlinear model, we rerun the simulation but with the nonlinear plant model. The closed loop response with the linearized model is shown in light colors. We see that the response of the nonlinear model is very close to that of the linear model and we therefore conclude that the design state feedback is appropriate for the nonlinear model. This is the end of the example, but in practice we would now go on to apply the state feedback to the actual plant. We would evaluate the response and revisit the state feedback design if necessary.